if it was illegal to say stupid things into a microphone. Why must you be so stupid? These guys would be doing life without parole. Hey, everybody, we're back from prison. Why do we keep encouraging this kind of behavior? It's the Breaking the Ice podcast with Josh Dolan. You know, we could, like, go to jail for this. Along with Mike Shu and Isaiah Moscahanna, Bonsa, Mana Blitz, Boskowitz, whatever the hell his name is. Wow, I, I think that's pretty good. Okay, cool. I had to go to Bill and Bob's roast beef, and that's where I am. Oh, no way. Nice. Dude, oh, oh what'd you my. get? Did you get it yet? I was thinking. I was thinking about you because look, who was the guy that we had on that was the, uh, the roast Andy beef Ferd. guy? Andy Ferd. Andy Ferd. And, and, and he freaked out when you called it a grinder. Yeah. It's, there's all of them listed <laughs> on the bag, and there's grinder right there. Tell him to fuck off. I can't believe they put hoagie on that bag. I hate it when people call it. Like, all my relatives <laughs> in Pennsylvania call it a hoagie, and I. They've got all of it. So much. Uh, look at that I, uh, submarine grinder. That's I, fine. Yeah. I venture. I ventured out to get a haircut, which was fucking amazing. So I'm like, I'm coming through Peabody. I'm like, there's no way. I was talking to Josh. I'm like, I'll be home at like five or two, and then Bill and Bob's happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't pass up a good sandwich. <laughs> I couldn't. That could, oh my god. I got up. Their roast beef. They're so fucking good. At roast beef sub, lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, a little bit of mayo, and oh, small fry. Oh, there you go. Wow. There you go. Yep. And I tipped the lady nicely. I just wanted a small iced tea, and I gave her like a twenty, you know, like a seventeen dollar tip because that's what everyone should be doing these days. Yeah, right, fucking, exactly. Yeah, there's fucking they, nobody they, in there. And she's like, "No, no, no, you don't have to." Give. I'm like, "No, she goes, let me give you a large." I'm like, "Oh, now I'm gonna have to piss in the middle of this broadcast." Uh, well, <laughs> finish the drink, and then you got you got a cup right there, man. That's big enough. I mean, right? if if I dip out, tell Andrew, I'm sorry, I had to pee. I'm on the road. I'm trying not to get sick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that cup and the the fry container they just look like they they get all their stuff from the same place the restaurants the seafood <laughs> restaurants get it that is a seafood restaurant fry cup oh my god it's and here's the greasy bag it's like I haven't had food oh, like yeah. this in fucking oh, months I can't tell you how much that's triggering me the greasy bag triggers me every right? time it could be oh. a inside and I'll still get hungry just looking at the greasy bag <laughs> You know, Dude, it's just yeah, that, triggering, man. That was so. I haven't been in here. It's, I don't even fucking know. And I'm like driving by, and like I think my car just automatically turned out. I'm like, sorry, Josh. I'm gonna have to do this from the parking lot. Wow, wow. <laughs> so you went with the roast beef sub, right? Oh yeah, because yeah. they, they do the supers. They do all the different sizes. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to see how they how they lay that into a sub. Their roast beef is mouth watering at Bill and Bob's. Hold is on, it, is it, is it up to is it up to a standard that they make it there themselves? You know? Oh God, yeah. Oh, the guys yeah, in the back, okay. not, a lick right. of, not, a, not a lick of English, and he's fucking cranking the shit out. Right? Oh, are they Greek? Are they Greek over there? Maybe. Hold on. Yeah, the Greeks do. The Greeks run some. I think the Greeks run Athens. There it is. Oh, look at that. You yeah, can tell. Right? Yeah, I'm you drooling. Can. My mouth I'm, is already I'm watering. You, you you can see why I came to the big red and white side. Oh I'm my like, God. I have to go. Yeah. And you yeah. can do your banking at People's United Bank. Potential sponsors. I was going to say the the roast beef place <laughs> looks like it used to be a Bank of America, judging by the architecture. Oh, this is fucking downtown. <laughs> this, here we are, downtown Peabody, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Isaiah, I, I had to stop. Yep, I hear the siren. I can tell you yep. there. <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> oh, that place is busy over there. Seventeenth Central Liquors. I might go over there right in the middle and get a six pack. Just get a tall boy. <laughs> right. Get a Modelo tall boy to go with your sub. That's just and then put it in that way. brown bag. Yeah, right. Is <laughs> this is some kind of diner over here. I haven't been here in fucking forever. It's unbelievable That's... how much not going outside for a year has fucked with everybody. Last time I was in Peabody, it had to be 10 years ago. Yeah. And I was doing a grand opening of a new 7 Eleven or something there. And oh, oh, for AAF? Oh, yeah. And a water main had busted right in front of the 7 Eleven. And it was like right. four feet of water. So nobody was oh. showing up. You know, nobody. <laughs> Nobody was showing up. It was the worst appearance ever. What's up, Razor? What's up, Razor? Hey, Razor. What's up, guys? How we doing? Awesome. Happy New Year. All that yeah. jazz. Happy New Year, man. You too. Yeah. Everyone good? Listen, Isaiah Isaiah was a little late because he had to stop at Bill and Bob's and Peabody and get a roast Take you back sun. outside. Oh, yeah, that, that oh, is dude, completely... I was I was on my way home. And how could how can you turn down? I'm giving them more love than most of our sponsors. Oh <laughs> yeah. Dude. I was driving down that street and that sign, and my car just landed right here. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, I just wolfed fun. down this. I, I haven't had a sub and a greasy, you know, fry in fucking a year. It was amazing. Crazy. Crazy. What's, your, 
Razor, what's your go-to sandwich? Oh, go-to sandwich. We're not going to judge. Don't worry. We don't judge. <laughs> no judgment on this show. No, not. It's so. Food. Wow. We have. I think you stumped they, them, Shoe. <laughs> no, no. I, I've got to. This is a serious question, right? Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. Yeah. Yeah, there is. There's places to go. Number one, right off the bat in Canada, Pita Pit. They have Ooh. one here, the one in Chestnut Hill, but it's not the same. As soon as I cross the border, as soon as I get to my hometown, that's the first <laughs> thing I do. Not quite a sandwich, but I crave that like Bill and Bob's. Um, mm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of the feel good. But we don't do sandwiches well in Canada beyond that. We don't have like we don't have – like a grinder, I did no idea what a grinder was until I've been here. You know what? I, like right. that. Like town, it's every name of a sandwich the, is on this bag. I love yeah, it. The, Hoagie, the town, grinder. The town pizza place that you guys have in each town, yep. we don't have that at all. So, I, like, I'm I'm really favorable any of those. If I go in and get a a turkey and cheese toasted in the big pizza oven, I I'm happy as pig and shit really <laughs> <laughs> that's right i don't I, you don't hear like signature canadian sandwiches no we yeah. don't have it that's yeah. why it's a tough question too because yeah. it's not you like you have one in your hometown that you had every your, town with your friends every every week you know i i don't have that same so like it's as basic as me going to newton town newton center and grabbing the 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 town pizza sub and and i'm right. happy like really enjoy that we, so. we were busy getting fat in america while you were playing hockey <laughs> yeah, right? yeah that's <laughs> right <laughs> that's <laughs> right <be> serious <laughs> yeah. what did you have like what did what did you go after school was it was like a poutine place i mean that's, I'm that's to what out. i was thinking too i was like what do you do <laughs> after <laughs> school you know i'm not trying. oh we didn't have like we got on the bus and went home like we it was <laughs> right small i guess homework, right what? You know, they, yes they didn't well, go I think too. I, I would assume, went to the NHL. I would assume like it was different in the bigger cities, but we were so small town. You know, we had the Jim's Pizzeria was the pizza place that we would get on Sunday nights. Um, nice. We would grab a burger on Thursday every other Thursday when my parents went grocery shop. You know what I mean? Like it was pretty. Yeah. We were pretty routine <laughs> in, in my small little town. That's weird. Yeah, I just yeah. when you mentioned that, I'm like, yeah, Canada isn't known for their great sandwiches. <laughs> All that- we got is poutine. We have poutine, yeah, poutine and, and, and hockey. Molson Canadian. Yeah, great. Right. Beer. Really yeah. strong beer. LeBath, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Molson Triple X. I remember going to the Oh, uh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I went yeah, to the yeah. forum to see a brew. Bre- I think it was, I was working in radio in Portsmouth and we sent like two busloads of listeners and people up and we drove up to you know canada bruins were playing the canadians that in and of itself is a total shit show and go but having gone to the garden all those years where it was like one beer per hand get away from me i'm like how many can i get and the guy's like how many do you want i'm like <laughs> how many can i carry and and like you have the the triple x and it's like you could smell the alcohol in that beer yeah oh shit no, I was no, no, no. See, that's that's how you're supposed to treat a guest the amount of people i see that are canadians <laughs> fans at bruins games they get turned away because they're not 25 and they don't you have to be 25 to drink as a canadian in the garden what? yeah you, they won't take ids they won't take ids from out of state unless you're over 25 at the yeah, boston so, garden yes that's a real thing yep <laughs> Does that go back to that fucking honor? I know you can't say anything, but Jesus <laughs> Christ, there's a reason I'm an avalanche that's, fan. Fuck that. That sounds like something Gaddafi came up with. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that. That's no, that. I mean, I, I understand. The Massachusetts, hurt, I like whatever. <laughs> what it, what it, what kind of law is it here? The mess, you know. The yeah, but you go school. up to Canada, they don't give a fuck. They're like, do you, what do you want with your beer? Some cocaine? Go watch yeah, the hockey yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, They're just yeah, good yeah, house guests yeah, up cool. there. Down here, we make you jump through hoops to Assholes. have a good time. <laughs> and, and with that thought in mind too, the, what do you think about the way the, the league set up this year? No Bruins Canadians games. Like what? Oh, it's sad, right? It's, it's sad. messed up. I mean, what is it? If every everybody plays their division and they play them back to back nights, so you're going to basically play the Flyers eight times in back to back sessions, right? You're playing everybody along. The, yeah, you're playing everybody eight times in your division. 
that, no it, country. It's because you're not allowed to cross border. Yeah, you, you can't. Yeah. You know that that's that's the issue right now. What happens with what happens with the Stanley Cup when I'm just making it up? The Bruins and Vancouver. Where do they play? Are they going to pick? No, a no, site? it'll do that. They'll do that. But but I, the hope is, you know, that'll be in June. I mean, right. Hopefully, we're going to be we're going to be running around with our pants off in June, oh. aren't we? Like, <laughs> it's, I don't have pants on now. I don't know what the fuck you're yeah. talking about. I ate this sub, and I'm fucking naked. This is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to be. You know, so that, that you know, the, I, I suppose at the border, if we still have an issue, they go into a bubble of some kind. But uh, the idea is that and there'll only be one team from Canada because of the, the way the divisions top two teams in each division. Yep. So the Canadian division, only one team will come out. Right. of that, so. I just yeah, that's OK. I'm just realizing that that's crazy. That's- I mean, they're, 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 we had we had Rick Middleton on in the last um, <clears throat> the last episode, and I asked him this question. And how do you how do you? I mean, it's nothing like this has ever done, been done before, right? So, no. how can you speculate on how that will affect the way teams play each other in the playoffs? Will it af- will it affect it at all? Because you're not seeing each other. I mean, you know, uh, it was brought up when the Bruins played Vancouver in the Cup. They only saw each other twice that year. Right. Is that correct? But still, they saw each other. I mean, they were on this. They were, you know, they were with each other, so they could check each other out. Will that affect in any way, severely, or maybe not at all, the the playoffs when teams don't don't meet each other during the year? I think it 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 can. Both teams are in the same boat. I think the matchup might favor one team or the other a lot more than in a typical year because of how the season's built and maybe the, you know, the Canadian divisions full of fast, quick teams, the East divisions full of big bruising defensemen. And maybe those, one of those teams would have knocked each other out. We would have seen two really quick, fast teams, but because they didn't face each other throughout the conference, they're just getting it to the final four. And then you have a huge discrepancy of, of style of play and right. one will outplay the other. You could see that more so than, than ever. It'll be hard to predict. I think of, yeah. of what, you know, the Canadian team's full of a bunch of dogs by the end of the year, just everybody got injured. Everybody got COVID except for one team and they breeze through it where the East right. had a bunch of tough teams. Hmm. What does that look like? What is it better to have an easy road? Is it better to have a harder road? So, the road's much different than what we've ever seen. Uh, but at the end, I, to answer roundabout, long-winded answer, I don't think it's going to be too much of a difference. All things equal. If everything stays the same, the, all the teams are playing similar styles. I think they'll, they'll adapt. It'll take a couple games of feeling out in that seven-game series in the semifinals. But, but the, the best team will win. Yep. It's like the football. It's like Super Bowl. It's like those teams – that's the thing. Both teams have the same advantage because they haven't seen each other at all. And now here's a game indoors, you know, kind of an even playing field setting. You know, I think it's, it's, uh, it, it might affect hockey. It might, the whole thing's weird. I'm, I'm interested to watch how it unfolds and, and yeah. playing the same teams over and over during the season. They're going to build up some, you know, get some of those rivalries, get the old Bruins uh, flyers rivalry back up. Cause I'm pissed. Cause I played you so many times in two weeks. <laughs> it w- that, that, and that, and when come April, when every game's a four point game, a six point game, there's a bunch of explain that, on the explain line. that. What, what is that? Well, a five point game. So a shootout, you know, you're talking about two points for a win, one point for a shootout, oh, right, 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 or right, right. vice versa. You know, a two you're, you're playing, Boston's playing Philly. Boston's in first place. Philly's in second place. Philly's four points behind going into a weekend back to back, right, which right, okay. wouldn't happen in a normal season. You just wouldn't be playing that much at that point in the season against the team that that's close to you. Philly can legitimately tie them in two right. days. Right. Whereas wow. usually you have to take 10 days to catch those points just the way it goes. So come April, it's going to be bananas in the league the, the matchups and the, and the scoreboard watching that's getting done throughout the entire league the jockeying for position is going to be really cool. So, so as much fun as it is to see Sidney Crosby back-to-back nights in the garden mm-hmm. right now, come April, May, and hopefully there's fans in at least half of the buildings, it'll be, it'll be a lot of wild hockey and a lot of wild wow. swings. Also, I imagine that the, the anger carries over too, because you can't, you can't do something one game and then hide for the next month when I'm like, well, right. we don't see him for another four weeks. Maybe they'll cool up. It's like, you see him tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the anger will be there. Fortunately, the game's softened a little bit. That yeah, but yeah, if that was in '99, I mean, there would be no one left to play after suspensions <laughs> throughout the league. Now, was there things like that, like when when you were playing, like if Joe Thornton was pissed off at somebody, and he's like, "I'm seeing him tomorrow when we go back home." <laughs> like, right? You, something was gonna happen. <laughs> no, no question. Yeah, you 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 can you could basically circle it on the calendar, even if it was two months later. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> you know what's coming down the pipe, and there's still some of that. We see it a little bit, but but it's not quite the same as it used to be. Do you think? I wonder. Come, do you think that'll come back because of this, and then maybe? Oh. I don't know if the NHL will will lighten up a little bit because of what's going on and loss of revenue and maybe trying to get people to watch the games. Do you think they may not encourage it, but let it go a little bit more? No, I think they're going to, I think they'll embrace, I, I think it's actually an easier time for the NHL and for the sport to embrace the rivalry because there isn't any ridiculousness like there was back then. What you, it's not good. The reality is the corporate world. It's not good to have bench clearing brawls every other week. And, and there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a group of people that love it. Uh, it is entertaining every once in a while. I love that course. shit. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, you, you can't beat it, but uh, on a business side of things, I think they like the intensity, the rivalry they have now and that they're building now in that it's Sidney Crosby against Patrice Bergeron. They're right. not fighting, but they're going to go in the corner and you're going to get superstars having a hate on for each other. And if those guys hate each other, those guys going nose to nose in the corner, taking each other out, face washes, mm -hmm. not necessarily the, the, you know, the old school Sandy McCarthy, Bob Probert fight at center ice <laughs> of two guys, 250 pounds wailing on each other. <laughs> the, 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 the different, it, it, the rivalry <laughs> can get more intense just in a different way and I, I think that's it overall good for the league maybe not for this podcast but uh <laughs> overall, we want to see more fights come yeah, on yeah 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 that that's you know what you the league doesn't have to be lean it's just changed culture of hockey's changed yeah. young kids have changed uh junior hockey used to be twice as bad as the nhl when i was 16 17 years old and, and now they don't allow fighting so that's where it right. starts yeah. um no longer are people filling buildings in Ontario to watch 16 year olds fight each other. Uh, and as crazy <laughs> you, what, as that what, sounds, they, that's they what it was. They don't do human cockfighting? No human yeah, cock that's, fighting? No, I, and it's so funny as I get, now I'm getting old, I'm old now. And 24 years ago, I, you know, I literally, it, it felt like it looking back that it was kind of cockfighting. We <laughs> literally 5,000 people, but you know, adults are screaming and yelling at two freshmen, junior, <laughs> sophomore, right. age, kill each other kids beating right. each other up you know it's it's crazy that that you know there was some money between the dads going 50 bucks ah, on the kid with the red hair yeah, he's gonna yeah, beat yeah. that kid Where, where's the where's the 20 year old guys running around where's the new 16 year old who thinks he's tough you know let's get him <laughs> right, well, right. Nowadays, it's, nowadays it's the parents that are fighting oh yeah yeah, yeah. the kids are stopping <laughs> oh playing on the ice That's to right. watch the parents fight in the stands. if you if you want if you want to see fights in arenas go up to to the New England Sports Center or something on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, yeah, it smash in that warm dogs. room. It's always no, in the warm no, room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my Especially god! Especially find find the rinks that serve alcohol in them. Those ones really, oh. those ones really get turned up. A friend of Ooh. mine just got shoved because his his kid plays hockey and his kid got into a fight with another kid on the ice and and uh, and beat that kid down and then the dad wanted to get on the ice and they stopped him. And then he was yelling at that dad and that dad walked right over to him and pushed him. And then the <laughs> cops had to get involved. And like, this is like high school hockey. Oh man. Ridiculous, oh, right? man. Just ridiculous. Save it for the pros. That's, what, oh, that's every, what hockey used to be like in Fitchburg. They used to serve pitchers. So. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Actually, oh. this wasn't Fitchburg. I wonder if this was up at the, uh, the, what is it called up there? The Civic Oh, Center? yeah, the Wallace Civic Center. The Wallace Civic Center, yeah. It was definitely there. You can smell the pushing and shoving when you walk in the door. So. <laughs> Green Day this... played there, right? Is that the place that Green yes. Day played? Did they play there? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Them, the oh, Foo God. Fighters, um, oh, Nirvana's played there. I know yeah, yeah, Nirvana too. played there back in the day, too. But I didn't know I didn't know those guys played there too. The oh yeah, they, they they had all the pictures up in like the locker room or like the locker room hall and yeah, they have it somewhere. I've been there once and that's like I'll never forget it. I was like, wow, that's, <laughs> that would have been a hell of a show in this place. I used to go up there to watch a roller derby 
every week. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, awesome. Oh, the ladies from awesome. Worcester would go up there and just beat ass all around. Yeah, it was they fun would. to watch. You know, that was a good time. Yeah. I remember my my dad brought me up there to go see a Worcester Ice Cats preseason game. And we got there, and I was like, this doesn't look like a hockey crowd. And we walked up to the, to the door, and it was a WAF concert. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the door guy was like, do you, do you want to go in? And my dad was like, do you want to go in? And I was, like, terrified because I was, like, six. And I was like, no, right. it sounds loud in there. And then there was, like, know. a couple of guys in, like, jean vests eating raw meat <laughs> just inside the door, you know. <laughs> Oh my God, uh, Rocco! Yeah. Oh my fucking God, Rocco! No shit. What are you thinking for this season, Razor? What are you thinking? Uh, I mean, just start with the Bruins. How, how how are they looking? What what are your predictions? Your old they roommates, look, Captain. Now, huh? That's wild. It is Patrice is now a, a grown man. They they look good. I mean, they they're they're really uh, they're 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 solid they had their three games where they couldn't score and going on the road going on the road's tough you got to sit in your room the whole time can't even go get a starbucks i mean they have you on lockdown yeah. it's it's no joke and it's, wow. and it's tough. In the same city town too so you're not that's right around. it's like pittsburgh's yeah. literally sitting they went to the rink this morning i'm sure just to go to the rink and change it up and now they've got to go back to the hotel tonight and you don't get to go have a nice meal downtown or walk around and you know find a guinness and hanging out you have to go back to so it's tough it's tough to get up for these road games so i think that was a little bit of the bruins issue those three games uh mm. they look really good in the last few games and they've already played philly they've played pittsburgh they've played the islanders all these teams that that were expected to to challenge the top four spots in the division so uh, they're they're right where they need to be they're going to be fine uh, david hasn't come back pasternak hasn't come played yet so they He's still have a lot this of weekend, isn't he? That's is he that's the that's the the hope, the idea. It looks like he's going to go on the road to Washington. So he's close. And whether it's two games from now, three games, whatever it is, it's they're in a good spot having him come back. So they're more than well oiled to to get get into the playoffs. And like we just touched on, the playoffs are are, are a different animal this year. You're going to be right. playing a team that you've seen eight times already, no matter what. So right. it's it's survival of the fittest, and, and who knows what a world looks like in in April, May, May. Talk about May some of those. The, talk about some of those restrictions. That sounds like it's pretty. I mean, obviously last year was a bubble when they got back, but I mean, how tight is the NHL with how the players can do anything in any city, any or at home even? They're 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 keeping it pretty tight. The, I'm sure Washington last week got busted the four four Russian guys were hanging out in the same hotel room on the road just playing cards, watching a movie, whatever they were doing. They you got can't busted. even do that? All four had to go on quarantine protocol. Oh, my God. Uh, so they, they're missing 10 days, uh, wow. have to get tested every day. Literally, they're on the plane together. You know, they've been on the bench together, everything. Not sure who blew the whistle on that. Not sure yeah. how that happened, how that came out. If the, if the team did it themselves, I'm not sure. But that's an example of how severe – the NHL is treating all of this. So again, you're yeah. allowed to, from my understanding, you can go for a walk, but you can't go into Starbucks and get a coffee on that walk. So you can walk around the building, but you can't <laughs> hang out in the building with guys you've been sitting next to on a bench. And, and or on a plane or being, te right. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're, not, they're not cutting any corners. They're not leaving any area for guys to misunderstand the rules. This is the oh. rule, one person per hotel room. They have some kind of hospitality Jesus. suite set up in the hotel, but as we've all been in hospitality suites, you know, those are kind of depressing to sit in for a long <laughs> period of time, no matter who you're with. Like uh, a bad croissant sitting on the yeah, table for two yeah, days. Exactly. It's like, oh, all right. Uh, I'd rather be in my room by myself. So, right. So it's, it's, it's not easy. It, like, they, again, it's not easy. You're going, you're, you're, you're going to the rink. You're probably staying at the rink a lot longer than you normally would just to have a little bit of freedom hanging out with the guys. Wow. You but they're, they're, and they're watching them. So they, all right. The, the guys that were talking, they, you know, they basically have watches saying, all right, we've just talked for 15 minutes. We're up to 13 minutes. Let's, let's move. Because if we stay together for 15 minutes, we're a close contact. If you and I get it, we're both out. So it's a, a matter right. of circulating, moving around all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a real thing. It's something that's I'm sure, extremely annoying and when you're losing 
is a oh, hundred times more oh, annoying. Oh, Standing you in your imagine? room by yourself, thinking about it, like watching it on TV, like fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go to a bar. Life is miserable <laughs> when you're losing and you're oh. on a Florida road trip and you're going out every night. Let alone when you're on the same road trip and it's 90 degrees outside and you have to stay uh. in your room all night. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, no golf. I, I, no golf. Guys, no. guys, yeah, no nothing. No, nothing. Oh, so guys have got to be on some serious edge by the end of these road trips. This have is you, where I think it's going to bring fighting back. Sorry, Mike. That's where yeah. you're going to be pissy. Yeah. And right. I see the Flyers fucking twice. Someone's going to get the shit kicked out of them. If yeah. they don't fight <laughs> each other in pregame skates, yes. They could have, uh, showing have you up heard on the about any there. guys, I don't know, just doing something about it, like something unique or trying to kill time in a, in a, in a, a way that's – you know, getting the Leafs. Yeah, it's great. The, I, the Leafs brought a karaoke machine. I heard they were doing karaoke. <laughs> oh and that's, God. that, that's straight Joe Thornton special, right? There. <laughs> that's so, awesome. That is awesome. jumbo hundred percent. So, so yes, there are the guys are getting creative guys are getting creative. I'm sure it's even more creative than we can ever imagine guys we're coming up with some crazy stuff that no one will ever hear about, but uh, the karaoke well, be a video be popping fun. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but yeah, I want to I'm see sure. some video of the karaoke. I'm sure that'll. Yeah, it's got. There be needs priceless. to be a TikTok video of like a, right. a of like a hotel hall, and all the doors are open, and you see the hockey players all have microphones, and they pop in, <laughs> pop out, like like yeah. whack a mole in a hotel yeah. room doing fucking karaoke. <laughs> now, what do you awesome. think? Uh, what, what do you think, Jumbo Joe's uh, go to karaoke song is? It Kiss? Because I know you guys dressed up as Kiss. <laughs> yeah, you know, big Kiss fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's yeah, he definitely has Kiss down. I mean, who knows? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, Bieber. He's got pop for sure. Bieber. Oh, I guess. My God. Bieber. He's a Bieber fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming. I don't know. I don't you can't hold me to it, but uh, I'm, I'm just tossing that, that out. Wasn't there. Good Joe Canadian Thornton. kid. Good it wasn't Canadian Joe Thornton. Kid. I wouldn't make I'd totally make fun of him right now. But yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll run into him somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta Maybe. have either Bieber or Thornton on next and see and you know, put them we'll put them together on a podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Razor, I wanna I wanna go back to pasta coming back real quick. And you mentioned this before, and I, I was kind of noticing this watching watching the team, that they are forming this kind of scrappy chemistry. It's something's forming and it's all those factors I think we've been talking about, the the restrictions and the way the schedule's set up. Do you think pasta coming back? Well, I mean, everyone's looking forward to him coming back, and he's great, but you think that will disturb something that's being developed right now that, you know, do you think it will hinder anything? No, I think it enhances it. I think okay. his energy, his his scrappiness, you know, he's got he's got that scrappy energy, that little brother energy <laughs> in him uh, flying around, bringing it. I think he'll he'll just improve that, enhance that, and he's he's obviously a great player, but I think he's really beloved in that room, and, and just the, the the intangible I, that where I've heard it so many times about Tom Brady in the last two weeks. I'm sick of that word, and I think that's why it just came out of my mouth because <laughs> it's, it's in there. But uh, he's uh, he's that guy. He's just the guy you want around all the time. So I, he's going to make it better. He can help the young guys. He can help, you know, because those young guys have to bring a lot of energy right now for the old guys like Craig and Patrice and Brad who – that, you know, those young guys are bringing that energy and David helps with that as well. So I, I think that he's going to fit right in on that top line again, and it's just going to make the, the team deeper and, and better. And he loves being there too. I mean, he's, I feel like that just enhances everybody else's morale probably on the bench. Yeah. And he's a guy, again, we just talked about how, how painful it can be a little bit. And especially for guys that are used to routines on the road, these young guys don't know any better. So you have, a Zaboro, you have Lausanne still going to New Studniki, Frederick. And then I know Pass has been around, but he'll be the guy that finds something silly to do at their hotel, right? He'll be the one that thinks of something to do that that gets everybody through the night or gets through everyone through the day. So so I think it's it's a good mix. They have a really good balance of young and old that 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 keep energy positive. So, How's it been with Nesson uh, doing, um, you know, with, with all the COVID protocols? I mean, how are you guys doing broadcast? Is, everything's different, but how is it in your world specifically as a sports broadcaster? Sure. For me, it's it's, it's the same. Uh, it being at the studio, we don't get to go to the Garden, the home games. Right. Uh, right. But it's essentially a road game, the same setup. We have the brand new fancy studio, which <laughs> which makes life a little more comfortable over there. That's nice. 
we have our masks on, you know, watching the game throughout the building and then we get to take them off and right before we talk. So, so for me personally, it's essentially the same as any road game I've done the last few years. Now for, for brick and jacks, the road games are tough. Home yeah. games are there. They get to go to the garden. They get to see the play develop. They get to have a, a good feel of the game at, on the road. They're in the green room oh. on a TV monitor, like the rest of us. And more importantly than that is that they get the feed from the visiting team. So you'll hear in between, in between whistles, Jack and Brick want to talk about something, but then they go and show a player on the other team and they have to right. kind of switch. They don't get the Bruins uh. replay where they can call for. So you'll notice it that they're doing such a wonderful job and how hard it is to, to go on the fly because they're trying to talk about something. Then the TV changes. They don't know where that feed's going to go and they have to catch up from that. So so I think the That's first few games they did on the road is hard, and they've done a really good job with that. Jack, Jack is awesome on the fly. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you've you known him for years, but knowing him over the years, he showed me all the prep work that he does for a game. Like, uh-huh. he doesn't even want to be spoken to game day because he's no. in there building this shit in his head. And I texted him one day on game day. He's like, Isaiah. I'm like, oh, sorry. And it, yeah. he's, he's dialed in. He's got pages and pages of notes. And then I can't even imagine – if someone scored a goal or something happened or there was a a, a moment and then you want to talk about that Bruins player, but it's against Philly and it's on a Philly player, that moment of, uh, of, of improv has to be unbelievable. That's right. It's, it's really difficult, really, really difficult. So they've, they've done a great job. They did a great job in the bubble and hopefully again, their hope is, is, you know, probably not in the regular season they're getting on the road maybe playoff time if 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 all things go great and then you know we're all looking to september go inside are you hearing anything about fans coming back inside at any point from your point from where you sit not here in massachusetts we're i i assume we're we're one of the 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 furthest ones along they they do have fans in arizona they've got fans in florida they've got fans in dallas already so what percentage you know that you know there, I believe I saw the number of 7,500 in those okay. three places. So you're, I would assume, mm-hmm. you know, 30%, 25% yep. capacity. So, I mean, that's um, a pretty good crowd for a team that's doing bad in the South. I mean, this- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's low hanging fruit to, to tell, tell the Florida Panthers that's a normal crowd, right? That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a sellout for the Panthers. So they but should be happy. They're there really they're selling out every night. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I want to get back to that in Massachusetts, though. My God, I see. I watch a lot of college, and you can see it. And even some of these playoff NFL games, you know, they're letting people in. They seem to be keeping them in their in their groups, and people have masks on. I mean, you've got to get. We've got to get back to something like that soon. Yes. Yeah. Can't wait. Please. Can't oh, we're going to be one of the last, though, in Massachusetts. If they if they do that business any way that like they do serving beer at the garden we're going to be last yeah (laughs) i'm a little over 25 so i think i can get a beer right right Right. how how important is that to to you personally when you were playing to having like the screaming crowd in there was that something that you fell off of because because i i theorize in all sports when this happened and they they weren't letting people in that i i i was imagining some players would actually play better (laughs) in all the sports because they don't have some guy in the stand going hey i fucked your mother last night you know that in their ear <laughs> the whole night and they're just kind of like oh this is nice i'm like, that guy in the, the game and everything yeah someone <laughs> like isaiah sitting in the crowd you know going yeah your sister and and you know so um, i used to fucking yell at jeter at fenway all the time and it wasn't oh, totally shit. Right. yeah <laughs> fuck you person. clemens when clemens went to the yankees i'm like fuck you oh. and that was that guy yeah. <laughs> so like how you know how important it was that to you when you were playing in the NHL or when you were playing, whenever you were playing, like, is that something you fed off of? Uh, certainly you get, especially the NHL, you get used to it. You, right. you get used to 20,000 in that sound. <laughs> so when you leave that and you go to an empty building, it's, it's that much more difficult. That being said, all of us, and I say all of us, all the guys in the NHL played with a lot on the line in empty buildings whether they were 14 or 15 yeah. or yeah. Okay. 19 yep. or 21 in this, you know, playing Sunday afternoon in Springfield mm-hmm. when the new England Patriots were in an NFC championship right. game in 2001, yeah. Yeah. there was three people in that building, right. but four, you know, the GM of both teams and three of the pro scouts 
who and your had, parents are in the had your life, you know, by their ha- in their in their hands. Yeah. You're playing as hard as you possibly can, no matter mm-hmm. who's there. So that it's it's difficult. Don't get me wrong. What Patrice and Brad they've played in Stanley Cup Finals like that yeah. for those guys, and that's where I talk about like the young guys have an advantage in that. The, the you know Studnika, Frederick, these guys. This is the NHL. This is all they know of the NHL. They just finished playing in empty buildings last year in in Providence in some of the places they play. They're playing in front of 400 people. So at college, you know, you go to, you know, random college and there's no one there on a Tuesday night. So they, they, they understand, or they haven't forgotten what it's like to play it with so much pressure, so much on the line in front of four people. And that, that, that energy those guys bring can, can bring the older guys up and and keep them going. But certainly for me personally, I would miss the crowds after playing in front of big crowds in front of a lot of people to, to get that momentum going, to get that energy. It it would be a little difficult and to get used to. The crowds razzing the opposing goaltenders is the best yeah, sound oh, in hockey. Yeah. And, and, it, and I remember back in the day, the Bruins, Canadians, the, the, the shit that we would try to lay on Patrick Roy and the oh. fucking noise level. And it was, I, it was, I can't remember the year, but it was, it was a game seven in the old garden. And I remember Teddy Donato scored, Ray Bork scored. Ray Bork's goal was so fucking loud. And the, the shit that we were raining down on Patrick Roy and we won the game, right? And it was like the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. It was so fucking loud, though. The Rua sucks. Yeah. There's nothing like that. And now it's like pin drop. <laughs> yeah, you're not Razor, can you can you relate to us or, or or remember anything that was said to you that because I know after a while you get used to it. You get used to people saying oh, stupid yeah. crap to you Awful all the time, shit especially right as you. a goalie. You yeah. know, yeah, you know, like people like Isaiah, they're trying to get into your head. Hey, anything hey. that stands out <laughs> that you were just like either shocked or you're like, oh, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> 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 no, there's always a couple where you're like, gee, man, that's what are you doing? Like, Why just crossing the line. Like, sister? holy, <laughs> yeah, like, holy smokes. And r- really, it's like, you're not going to get mad at that. You know, the guy doesn't know your sister. He doesn't know your mom. You know what I mean? Like, he's not. Um, you hope so, anyway. God. Even the hard ones, the tough ones are when you're sitting there in the corners of some of the older buildings and you're the backup. Yeah, I remember in one like oh. where what like I was playing Dumping bad. fucking beer I was on playing you. bad in like the season. One of the Leafs fans come down in San Jose, like, man, what's going on? I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to deal this in San Jose tonight. You know, like I just got all, I'm on the like want to stay far away. So, and then and then you already talked about it, Boston Montreal playoffs with oh. uh, a last name that has two syllables. It's pretty <laughs> easy to heckle that all night long. Break Rob. Oh God. <laughs> 65 minutes straight. Anytime, you know, the whole thing. You go back that old four series. That's all you can hear on the on this on the sound. It's if I had three syllable name, I would have been okay. But the two syllable name just destroys you. So but that that's the fun stuff. That when they're yelling at you in Montreal and telling you how much they you hate your mother and, and they, they wish you were dead. And that is, that is the best. That's, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> Barrasso was one. Remember when Barrasso played for the Penguins back in the day, this is a good story. I don't know if I've shared this. Uh, so it was before all the nets, all of that shit. Barrasso Lemieux was still playing. The Penguins came to town and were absolutely pasting the Bruins. It was fucking just men against boys when it was Yager Lemieux, that whole shit. And Barrasso was in goal. And I was, I'd gone to the garden. WZLX was doing a promo out front. They were handing out kazoos. So I grabbed a couple. You can see where this is going. (laughs) Those things are, the whole place is going. We are getting absolutely fucking shelled by the Penguins. And I had really good seats right behind the goalie. And I just fucking launched a kazoo. Hits hits Tom Barrasso in the helmet. I was immediately <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. rightly so they should exactly. never let you back for doing that no <laughs> first of all don't hand out fucking projectiles outside I know <laughs> like, handing free no fan responsibilities 
<laughs> I mean, good good promotion for ZLX, I suppose, at the time. But, but Barrasso's, Barrasso's was a good name. Barrasso is very close to asshole. Yeah, and he's yeah, from so here, was, too. So, I mean, there's... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I felt more hate because I, get, I got kicked out. But a, a year later, my good friend Doc, who's a huge Penguins fan, his two little boys at the time, who are now 30, uh, met Barrasso at a golf tournament to get an autograph. And the dick completely shunned the kids. So yes. my friend turned to me and he goes, you know what? Fuck them. I'm glad you threw a kazoo. In <laughs> <laughs> and you're I'm still like, getting kicked out of places today. Uh, well, <laughs> Stop handing out bricks at the front door. <laughs> so, uh, so the Bruins are, are um, they're taking on the Caps. Is it this weekend? Yes, yeah, Saturday, Saturday, oh. Tuesday, Saturday, uh, Monday. Yeah, so that's, Big Z's back. Yeah, yeah. So that's I can't imagine like you know uh, what what Chara meant to that team, and now they got to face him as an opponent. And how does that get into the? That must get into their heads a little bit. It'll well, be weird. It'll come be up on the ice and just say, Hey, it's good to see you, buddy. And they'll be all like, Oh, you know, <laughs> well, uh, you know what? It's going to be harder for Zidano. It's harder for the guy that leaves. It, yeah. it really, it, okay. It'll be yeah, more of cause he's, you know, it'll be, it'll be different for him. They'll be, I mean, no one's fighting him, obviously. That, that's, you know, <laughs> no. it, we're going to find be... out who Z didn't like pretty quickly. I think in that, that first period. Uh, right. He's not gonna, you know, he's not taking a shot at any of the big guys. There's not gonna, it's, uh, it's gonna be odd. Zidane's gonna try and play a really good game. He's not gonna, you know, he's, he's not gonna go try and hurt anybody. He's gonna right. try and score a goal. He's gonna try and go make right. breakout passes and prove that they should have kept him because he's right. very good at defense. Not, he's not proving. He doesn't have to fight anybody to know. You know, he's not gonna go bully people. That's not Zidano. That's we've you know, been doing this with all the sports. You got you got Mookie Betts in baseball. You got Zeno and at the Bruins. Tom Brady with the fucking Patriots, and I don't even know on the Celtics that probably went to shit too. But it's like yeah. we have to look at these superstars <laughs> in other uniforms. In Brady's sense, he's like fuck you. I'm back in the Super Bowl, Bill. You know, I I hope I hope Char does well. You know, because that's the best part where you want to say yeah. you should never have traded me, and I'm here in Washington. I don't hate you, but I want to beat you. Yeah, that's what he's going to try and do. And, right. and listen, the the Bruins are going to have just the players are going to have just as much behind closed doors. They're saying, listen, you know, we, 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 love, we love Z and he's great. But you know what? We're we're just as good without him. We, why? Why do why aren't? Well, Jacob mm -hmm. Zoborl, Jeremy Lozon are saying, listen, I can do that old man's job. Well, I can do what he's <laughs> doing. Right? They're not going to say it, but closed doors. They're, they're thinking it. They're pro athletes. Like they're yeah. looking at, they've been looking at Zidano for five years saying, listen, I'm, I mean, I get it, but I can do that. When right. are you going to uh, leave guy open? the so, spot up. <laughs> so those guys, those guys are going to have just as much to, to prove and, and want to get, get, get the job done. So it'll be interesting. I, I'm sure everybody involved will be happy when it's over Saturday night. It's one yeah, of those ones you want to get out steel. of the way. Yeah, yeah. You just, it just, just get it out of the way. I think it'll be more comfortable for everybody on Monday. It happens every year in hockey. It really yeah. does. It might, it might, it's not Tom Brady, but there, I, I played Matt Sundin, the hall of famer in Toronto went to Vancouver. Very yeah. That's the most similar situation that I was a part of Toronto. Vancouver isn't Toronto, Montreal or Boston, Montreal. It's mm. not Toronto, Montreal, but it's that as close of an outside original six rivalry as you can have. Right. And that's what Boston, Washington is. They're yeah. a rivalry that's not original six Vancouver. Matt's went there. People were livid. He comes back. Everyone loves him. They get the get it out of the way, and <laughs> yeah. and you move yeah. on. Right. So right. so these guys, it's it, it it's just it, it's probably more part of hockey than than the other sports, to be honest. Just because of uh, the way guys move around a little bit. Right. Yeah. You know, Josh and I when we were on WAAF, we used to have a, an ongoing bit after uh, Char broke his jaw. <laughs> <laughs> that anything that you know if you came in it's like oh i, I don't know I, I may have ate something my stomach hurts and then we'd break into and zidane or char does not talk like this but we always made him nice. sound like a bond villain like oh you have a little tummy ache <laughs> oh, I'm in the stanley cup final with a broken jaw <laughs> you know, so every, we'd always measure that up to like you know whatever you know i got a paper cut or i twisted my ankle it's like oh really 
I had my job <laughs> wired for the Stanley Cup Finals. And I feel like I was always complaining about something during a commercial break. Like, oh, my rib hurts. I think I have cancer. And you're like, oh, you think you have cancer? I'm sorry. <laughs> Stanley Cup with a broken jaw. <laughs> Maybe yeah. start taking care of yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, that's funny. That's awesome. But now well, dude, with thanks the, for coming. Oh god, uh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say with the COVID things, we we don't get the uh, the fifteen uh, video montages and standing ovations that usually we get when people leave teams oh. and come back. Thank right. God, I'm so <laughs> sick of those things. <laughs> only guy, only guy that deserves that is Dan O'Char. There would there'd be fifteen guys, you know, like I mean, <laughs> the guys here that get like those now. Years. Oh my God, it drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just an old man sitting on my porch, bitching and complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're not getting them it's great we're not getting them. <laughs> oh my god get off my lawn yeah, yeah. exactly oh, razor thanks a lot man for yeah, uh thank you on with us. hey it's always All fun right, so i love it's you, been you too long uh, andrew raycroft on nesson and uh also from what i read from your wikipedia page he is uh one of the co-hosts of the Breaking the Ice podcast. Oh, that's you can right. Find uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts. There you go. That's on your Wikipedia. Yes. Yeah. That is awesome. There you go. I mean, you had to cut down. You got another job. You come on twice a year instead of every yeah. week now. It's okay. Still, I'll take the co-host title still. Yeah, no problem. Quality. It's qu you started this with Josh, Mike, and I are just right. here fucking oh, around. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Well, you guys. He's a founder. You, you guys build that thing up and start sending residuals. How about that? We'll yes, yeah. we're, we're waiting. We're waiting for Josh to send us those first. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, it's a long Josh list, right? It's a long <laughs> list. We call that mailbox money. So yeah. Yeah. Here, here's right. what I'll ask you do, Josh. I'm going to ask that you let's give these guys one more plug. Oh, he's here. showing us his new Audi again. So. Lady, you hey, listen, I have a job for free. Right there. Bill and Bob's. There you go. That's, that's that's how you can pay me for this show. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're just going to hang out there until dinner time? Is that it? I, I didn't want to drive and do the podcast. I would have gotten in an accident. And yes, Also, I why are you all the way out there? You you went all the way there to get a haircut? They don't have barbershops in Marblehead? No, they do, but I'm I'm loyal. And the woman we've been seeing oh. in Medford has been, she's awesome. Kathy's awesome. So I went to see her and I needed to take a ride, man. My car, like everybody else's, is getting 12 months to the gallon. <laughs> 12 months to the gallon. <laughs> Fuck. I had to go. So, so I drove to Melrose to get a haircut. And like I said, Bill and Bob's, it's like a magnet in there. I also <laughs> go for it. Well, not that long of a drive. I think uh, Razor, the same guy cuts my hair that cuts your hair at the Natick Mall. So, Oh, yeah. Jeff, he's awesome. Yes, Jeff. See, and aren't those rides to the Natick Mall nice? You get out, you get away from the kids for a minute, you get to breathe, and you're like, They oh, are wow. now that there's parking spots at the mall. They used to be <laughs> yeah, a nightmare. Yeah. But, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's a great, great going number. in there. Just I, wheel right in. I, uh, I, I gotta tell you, and no offense to your, your barber, Jeff, but to me, the Natick mall now is Satan's anus. <laughs> just, wow. That's just like the worst place on the planet. And then I, that's, I'm from Natick. All right. And I remember when that mall was like a, a, a shithole and it had a fountain with green water, they would throw plywood over in the winter. So Santa could sit up there it had, <laughs> it had Woolworths in it. You know, it had an, or an orange Julius that I worked at and a Papa Gino's, you know, and a oh, yeah. mother. it was like, it wasn't like it is now. And it's just like, yeah. to me, I go in there and like, this is just everything that's wrong with the world. A mall, <laughs> a mall. <laughs> it's a mall that's separated by class. So right. I mean, yeah, exactly. You know, well, it's too, it's too yeah. bad, Mike, because our new sponsor is the Natick mall. So you might want to <laughs> quit that. I'm sorry, Razor, you can have your job back. <laughs> it's not the hallway with Gucci though. So you're good. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> awesome thanks razor appreciate yeah. it good to see you man everyone's good kids are good family's safe everyone's good we're all good hanging in there surviving good. yep good, light good. Good. the tunnel here so we're all good thanks for thanks for having me on it's a blast yeah thanks, thanks for coming for on man on. yeah 100 percent. you're still a co-host fuck <laughs> yeah, apparently yeah you gotta come on <laughs> awesome okay. brother have a good day all right guys all right see you man thank you you got it take care see you guys bye Mike worked at the Orange Julius at the Natick Mall. I like it. I worked at, I, you know, that food court was like way ahead of its time when they first yeah. built it. It was like a big right. deal. And it had an Orange Julius, a Papa Gino's, yep. and a Charlie Chang's of California, like fast food Chinese yep. restaurant. I worked <laughs> at that one too. Nice. And that was, you know, the Orange Julius job, that was tough because it was constantly busy. Yeah. Um, but working at the Charlie Chang's place, I worked with these two guys who uh, served with the army in Korea. And they knew way more Chinese than I do. They're like these two biker dudes. I wish I could remember their names. 
and um and they would give me so much shit for not knowing chinese <laughs> and they would be like talking chinese behind my back and making fun oh, of me and like cut the shit you guys this is fucked up <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> you always have to have a mall job. I worked at I worked at the Arby's at the Liberty Tree Mall. Mm. In Arby's I bet you smelled awesome after work. Oh, dude, it right? was that, and there was a oh, and and I worked at a KFC in Danvers. Awful. I, I would gotta, never, never I eat a KFC. You, when I first met my wife, Oof. she was working at a KFC in Gardner. In Gardner, and, Mass. And I used to when I used to go pick her up at work when we had like a night out or something. She'd get in the car and she would smell amazing <laughs> <laughs> she'd get it like and she would dress like get dressed at work so she would like go in the bathroom at work you know and put her dress on and make up look beautiful and get in the car and she'd be like hi and i'm like oh you smell like extra crispy oh <laughs> man is that mashed potatoes <laughs> oh, like, oh. skip the movie and just go home and i'll just pour gravy all over yes. your body. That, yeah that was that was an that interesting was a major turn on for me <laughs> that was an interesting. That, that KFC was in Danvers, right across from. Uh, there was a Coleman's, an old Coleman's. I remember it. And my buddy Eric and I worked there, and uh, one Halloween, we decided it would be a good idea to drop acid and go to work. Oh, and, at KFC. Oh yeah, and we oh were the only God. two in there. Okay, and it was fine at the beginning. <laughs> and until and it then kicked it in. Kicked in. <laughs> oh and my God. My fucking God! I I remember just there was just the powder or whatever the fuck it is, the, 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 the shit they roll all the chicken in. We, it was everywhere. Chicken was everywhere. We had the hose out spraying it everywhere. People were coming in. We were spraying the customers with the fucking, the sink oh hose. My God. Was we the colonel fired. talking to you? Did the colonel we, talk to you? Uh, acid. <laughs> wow. I was fucking, I was in the wall, Pink Floyd, the wall that night. And it was, I, we, we, needless to say, we got fired. Was the colonel <laughs> talking to you going like, you know, boys, uh, the song Mother is really about government surveillance. <laughs> Don't forget those yes, herbs and spices. <laughs> oh, dude. Wait, wait. He ended That's up learning problem. all the names of the chickens that were being cooked that day. <laughs> I was fucking wow. <laughs> the jobs we all had in fucking high school. What? Oh, my God. Yeah. I finally got a job at a at strawberry. <laughs> And it got that me out of the strawberries. You remember yes. that place for record store? Oh, yes. Tape. Yeah, that Which was one? Uh, Framingham, Route 9. Okay, and, so that uh, must have been connected to the same one that was in Danvers. Oh, yeah, they were all the same. They were, that was specifically a New England uh, record store chain. And That's where I met fucking Guns N' Roses. I le I was in I high school. It must have been a BCN or an AAF thing. I yeah. can't remember. But I fucking pieced out of high school, went over there, and met these fucking, you know, skinny little fucks slash. And uh, who was the one that didn't Duff McKagan die? No. No, Duff McKagan is no. very much alive. No, he no, no. Who, his, who, pan his pancreas exploded, but he survived. Yeah, maybe that's he, what it was. He's, he's yeah. preserved by alcohol, but. It's okay, maybe that's what right. it That's kind of like what I am. Um, but yeah, no, I remember meeting those guys there. It was like fucking 19 years old. It was super cool. And they did a show at like, I don't even think it's, it's not there in Boston anymore, but wasn't there a place called The Rat or something? Oh, yeah, The Rat, Kenmore Square. Yes. That place I mean, was, I was like legendary. I was like 18 or 19. It was it was like before, right before Appetite for Destruction came out. But rec Strawberries, Records, and Tapes, that place yeah. was fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, there was one in Kenmore Square. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. met okay. Motley Crue. Uh, not met, but I had to like watch the line at an indoor signing for shout. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of meeting them. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I remember someone like while the, all these people were in there and there were cops outside and everything, some guy tried to steal something oh, and ran out the door, and our manager ran after him, and some good Samaritan in line just stuck his leg right out there, and the guy went <laughs> flying like five feet on the pavement, you know, like cassettes everywhere, you know. And, and, uh, he got I him. thought you were going to say Tommy Lee chased him out and got him. <laughs> right? No, those guys, I remember those guys walking in. They reeked of vodka no. and, and like sweaty leather because they were all dressed up. Oh, they had the man. On and everything oh. like that. When they came I'm so in, jealous because that's when Motley Crue was Motley Crue. Now they're just oh. a bunch of old women. But I mean, right. Yeah. right. Oh, no. They were a fucking mess when they walked in there. But yeah. So, was, so you saw them while they were like at the age they were in the movie Dirt, The Dirt. Yeah, right. Well, we the devil came out, so that was like they were just starting to become gigantic stars. Oh yes, the shadow of the devil just came out, and they That's went signing such an album. And we were there for like three hours. I was a little thing, confused by Theater of Pain because you went from like the black leather to whoa, but I realized that was when the glam rock thing was swinging around. But I'm like, 
you're fucking pretty close to poison. Stop doing that gay shit. Well, you know what? They they let they blazed the trail for poison. I mean, they they, you know, they did, guys... but then they, they kicked the pink fucking pants off. Let's go. Hey, you know it's Molly Crew, man. <laughs> I know, I know. Hey, they you find a like template you... that works. Stick to it, you know. Well, yeah, they you're you... mind, you know. No way were they that that movie Dirt is fucking or is it called The Dirt or Dirt? Yeah, dirt. The Dirt. Yeah, it's based on that is um, so good. Yeah, Nikki Six's book and um. The best line in that movie is their manager when he breaks the fourth wall and he's talking into the camera and he goes, you know, I've worked with, uh, you know, I've worked with all these bands and by far Motley Crue are the worst. And he said Motley Crue didn't do stupid things because they thought that's what rock stars should do. They did stupid things because they were Motley Crue. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. The greatest line I think about Motley Crue ever. Oh my yeah. God. First time I saw them was like the Worcester Centrum. I think it was. And that was when Tommy Lee had that fucking spinning drum set came out oh, over yeah. the crowd. I was like, yeah. what the fuck is this skinny guy in his underwear? His fucking hog is hanging out. Thank you, Pamela Anderson. No, God bless I, her. I took my uh, daughter to see them over at the DCU center on their last tour. And Alice no Cooper opened up for him. And I kind of wanted her to see Alice Cooper more yeah, yeah. than because he's put, he's, Every time I've seen him, he's been like top notch, one Showman. of the best shows ever, you know. And he's still great on stage. And so and we, he we, he was at the DCU Center with them. Yeah, he was, up for him? he was opening for Motley Crue. I, that's fucking that's awesome. So I know, right? It's like but, <laughs> that I've always sense, wanted to see awesome. Alice in a big venue because I've only seen him in like Orpheums and stuff, and you can barely hear it because it's so loud. But the those places aren't built for Alice Cooper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sound, I feel like you know, would sound better in the DCU he, Center. He went through his set and he was awesome and chloe loved it because you know he puts on a show like kiss you know oh, yeah. in fact if it oh, wasn't yeah. for him kids probably wouldn't be doing anything they were doing but right and then motley crew comes on and, and four songs and i'm telling her you see those rails you know the drummer's gonna go up on there like a roller coaster and spin around all this stuff and i'm telling her and then four songs in she's like can we go home oh <laughs> Like, they, guys, they were totally boring <laughs> and and i'll never forget this is one of the proudest moments of my life she goes they're just not as good as Alice Cooper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Honey, you know what, honey? You're absolutely right. Let's go, let's get go home. Yeah, let's go get ice cream. That <laughs> that happened to me when I was like 12. My I, I was the biggest Aerosmith fan, and we my parents brought me to see Aerosmith and Kiss together. Ooh. And Kiss oh. opened, and then I, wow. I, I was like annoyed that Kiss was even there. I was like, I just wanted to see Aerosmith. And then after Kiss was done and Aerosmith came out, I was like, this is kind of dumb. They're just standing there. Right. <laughs> I was like, I was totally disappointed. I was like, definitely have Kiss go last next time. <laughs> right. right. All right. I got to get out of here before the yeah. fucking villain. And I got to go. Uh, me. I got right. my wife at work, but um, all right. Do it. Later, well, boys. Fun. Thanks to our sponsors. Um, yes. Thank you. Invoke Media and Chris over at Garage Doors Plus and uh, Holliston Meadows Pet Resort and the guys at Wolfpack Coffee. I drank about yes. five cups this morning. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so Bridgewater State Pots. University. Bridgewater State University. We still have an intern. I don't know if he's doing anything. Yeah, what is fuck Andy's doing? Where he's he's. Uh, That's a I fucking don't solid answer. You don't fucking know. <laughs> you don't know what he's doing. You don't know what the do fuck you're doing. What's he no, doing? I don't. I'm panicking about the baby. I mean, it's oh, yeah. yes, That's right, yeah. How's oh, did you tell on? Razor that you were having a baby? I I didn't. I I did have to <laughs> tell him that. I, well, I I said something about my wife having an ultrasound, but I mean that could mean anything. So no, I, that I, means I, baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything weird yet josh anything uh scary happened that's got some and fucking I, back scary pain. i don't mean health wise i mean has your wife frightened you yet um she she <laughs> really so has not before she hasn't changed once she has had zero pregnancy symptoms until about two nights ago i had to like help her get up off the couch and like walk now because she's having severe sciatic pain because Ouch. apparently my daughter just has a fistful of her nerves so, yeah mm. wow but I, yeah, right. she's uh, well, that's good, but everything else is healthy. That's good, right. yeah. E everything else is healthy. Um, last night was the first night that she she did give me, um, like I, I said something wrong and then she just turned into not her, and I was like, oh, this is what Mike she was talking about. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen, it'll like snap and then go right back, like nothing happened. You just gotta roll with it brother you yeah. just got like it's surfing it's like going to the dentist <laughs> you, know, you just gotta she's let it growing happen. a fucking child leave yeah. her alone 
Yeah, Remember that. So. There's a there's a human being inside of her going, you know, I want chocolate. You know, like <laughs> at three in the morning. So, well, yeah. that's good, man. Good to hear. All right, so, guys, I gotta go. I gotta pick up my wife. Go do it, boys. We'll talk to you next week. All right. All hopefully, right. she smells like KFC. Good luck. I know. Oh! Really. I wish. <laughs>